Famous actor Seth Green had his NFT stolen, including Bored Apes, Mutant Apes, and a Doodles. Now here's the thing, his Bored Ape was set to be featured in an upcoming TV show, but because he no longer has the ape, the TV show might not happen. And what happened to Seth Green isn't that rare in the crypto and NFT space. Unfortunately, over the last year, we have seen many people click on phishing links, malicious links, and having their crypto and NFT stolen. And it happens on Ethereum, and it happens even on Solana. Morgan, who has a popular Twitter account, posted the other day that she clicked on a link on Solana and had her OK Bear stolen. And these attacks have nothing to do with seed phrases or hardware wallets. In both of these cases, a ledger or a trezor wouldn't really help because in this case, people are clicking on links and they are giving permissions to contracts to take their crypto and take their NFTs. Sure, a ledger or a trezor helps because it slows down the process. There are more steps. So during that period, someone may realize they are being scammed. But in the end, a ledger doesn't always help in this case. We need to learn how to not click links. But practically speaking, that doesn't really work because we know not to click links. Yet over and over, people continue falling for these scams. So instead of trying to avoid clicking a link, which is kind of inevitable, we're going to click on these links, we need to set up a second safeguard. And that is creating a new wallet address. I'm not talking about going out and getting a brand new wallet, buying a ledger or buying a treasure, but creating a new wallet address. And the thing is, it is free. Everyone must do this if you are in the crypto and NFT space. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create these new wallet addresses on Ethereum and Solana for free. So let's go ahead and start with Ethereum. So the main goal here is to create two or more wallets so that if one of the accounts is compromised, the other accounts will be safe. So if we head over to MetaMask, it is so simple and easy. We head over to the upper right corner, create account, and we can give it a name. We'll call this one account number two and create. So now we have two accounts. You can see account one and account two. We can create as many as we want. And the thing that we wanna do is have one account at the very least for minting or interactions with contracts and another account for holding our valuables. The one that holds our valuables, we do not wanna connect that to any malicious smart contracts. Actually, we don't wanna connect it to any smart contracts. So we're gonna have two or more accounts. Now here's the thing about Ethereum. Having two accounts could be expensive. We may have an account, let's say account number one that we use for minting and interacting, but then every time we actually mint an NFT or have a large amount of crypto, Every time we send it to account number two, there's gonna be very high gas fees. So if you have the money, the funds to do this, definitely do it. But let's say this is a problem for you. At the very least, have your first main account that you use for basically everything. But once there is something on account one that is very valuable, whether it's a large amount of crypto or a very valuable NFT, pay that Ethereum gas fee and send it to the new account, five, 10, $15. So that if account one does get compromised, at least everything in account two will be safe, right? So there's two different addresses over here. Even though this is in the same MetaMask account, they are two different wallet addresses. So when we connect our MetaMask wallet to a protocol, we're not connecting the whole entire wallet. We are only connecting that specific address. So split your addresses, at least two guys, at least two, but even more, right? There are people that may wanna have three, four or five, depending on their portfolio. So this is for Ethereum on MetaMask. You can do this on Coinbase wallet as well. And it is free, no excuse. Always have two wallets. For example, if Seth Green had his NFTs in separate wallets, he would have still lost one of the NFTs, but he wouldn't have lost everything. And let's go ahead and look at Solana as well. So with Phantom Wallet, we can do the same exact thing. We head over to the upper left-hand corner, add connect wallet, create new wallet, and boom, we have wallet number two. We can create another one if we want, right? Create new wallet, wallet number three. So now we have these three wallets that we can move around. And with Solana, there are basically no fees, right? Fractions of a penny to send between wallets. So in this case, you don't have to worry about gas fees. So for Solana or a Phantom Wallet, what I would do is have my wallet for interacting and minting with a very small amount of Solana on it. 
and everything with value, I am going to move into a different wallet, right? Wallet number two or wallet number three. And these wallets, wallet number two or wallet number three, I am never connecting these to any applications. The only one I'm going to use is wallet number one, again, with very little funds on it. So that if I ever am hacked on wallet number one on this specific address, it won't affect this wallet too, which has a different specific address. So let's say you did connect to these malicious sites. You had your funds, your NFT stolen. Well, what do you do next? You can revoke permissions for certain applications. So in Phantom Wallet, if we head over again to settings, trusted apps, we'll see our trusted apps and we can revoke permission. The thing about Solana though, is because it's so cheap to move funds around, for me personally, if I had a compromised Solana wallet, I would just go ahead and make a brand new wallet and send all of the new funds there. However, with Ethereum, this could be very expensive. If we create a brand new wallet because our Ethereum wallet is compromised, it's going to cost us a lot of money to send all of those funds to the new wallet. So with Ethereum, it's a little bit different. For Ethereum, I'm going to head over to revoke.cash, connect my wallet, and it will show me my token and NFT permission. So for example, let's say I connect my wallet and I see I have a certain coin, right? $50,000 worth of a coin or $20,000 worth of a coin with unlimited allowances to a protocol that I don't recognize or one that I actually do recognize. I realize it's a malicious contract. I could go ahead and revoke access. The thing about revoking access though is that you will have to pay an Ethereum gas fee. And same thing for NFTs. You might go to the NFTs tab, see an NFT that you have that has unlimited allowances to a specific protocol or contract that you don't recognize. You can go ahead and revoke permission for that as well. But hopefully you never get into the situation. Hopefully you have separate wallet addresses so that if one does get compromised, you only lose a very little and all of your valuables are safe on a different wallet. Now, the thing about clicking links is we don't know what we're clicking. We may click a link thinking we're sending Ethereum or we're minting a new NFT, yet the contract is saying, hey, give me your valuable NFT. So go ahead and watch this video on how to nickname smart contracts so that you do not fall for a scammer trying to steal your NFT.